we're going to try and tackle some questions that involve the maxima and minima problems. Okay, so this is a part of calculus, and we're going to be doing a lot of differentiating to find the maximum and the minimum values of things. So in question one, we have a rectangular frame, and it's to be made from a piece of wire 120 centimeters long. So if I want to draw some sort of diagram for this, we have a rectangular frame, okay, and let's call the length x and let's call the width y centimeters. Now if the length is x centimeters, express the width also in terms of x. Okay, so instead of y, let's try and represent that width in terms of x. Okay, so what do we know? Well, we know that this rectangular frame is made of 120 centimeters. So in other words, the uh, perimeter of this shape is going to be 120. So what's the perimeter of this little rectangle? It's going to be 2x plus 2y, and that will give me a perimeter of 120 centimeters. Okay, let's divide everything by 2. So x plus y is equal to 60, and we want to, we want to find the width in terms of x. Okay, the width being y. So we want to make uh, y the subject. Okay, so if we move x to the other side, this is how we represent the width in terms of x. Okay, so that was just the first part, and let's leave it up there. Now, we're going to try and find the area of this shape. Okay, well, finding the area of a rectangle is super easy. That's just length times width, which is x times y. But in terms of x, we know y is equal to 60 minus x. Okay, so the area is going to be uh, x multiplied by the 60 minus x. And if we kind of expand it, 60x minus x squared is going to be my area. Okay, so let's leave that up there. Now, we want to find the value of x that gives me a maximum area. Okay, so we can see uh, in the previous part we found, okay, well, the area is this formula or this equation. Okay, now depending on my x value, uh, the areas are going to change. Okay, so what we want to find is the x value which gives the maximum area. Okay, so to do that, we want to find uh, some sort of stationary point in this. Okay, we want to find a stationary point and make sure that gives a maximum area area. Okay, so to find a stationary point, we're going to try and differentiate. Okay, well, what we're going to differentiate is this area. Okay, so we're going to differentiate this area in terms of x. So dA over dx, okay, so simple calculus, okay, and this will be my derivative. Now, to find the stationary point is when my derivative is equal to zero. Okay, so let's find, uh, in this little equation, let's try and find the value of x. So I want you to solve it. Okay, it's not too difficult. And we found, okay, x is equal to 30. Okay, so that's a stationary point for this area. Okay, so we differentiated it, made it equal to 0, and we found, okay, the stationary point is 30. Now, we're going to try and determine, or we don't know if this stationary point is going to give me a maximum or minimum area. Okay, now if we want to confirm or try and determine if it's going to give me a maximum area, we're going to have to find its second derivative. Okay, so from this area, we found the first derivative, and from here, we're going to differentiate again to find the second derivative. Okay, so let's differentiate this. Not too hard. Okay, if we differentiate it, we get negative 2. Okay, and we know that negative 2 is obviously less than 0. So what that is saying is my second derivative is negative, meaning uh, x is equal to 30. That stationary point will give me a maximum value. So if you're not quite sure why a negative second derivative will give me a maximum, I would just try and refer to another video that explains that process. Okay, so x is equal to 30. Okay, so that's the value for where this area is going to be a maximum. So let's find that area. Okay, so let's find the maximum area. So all we need to do is, well, area is equal to 60x minus x squared, and we get a maximum area when x is equal to 30. Okay, so I want you to sub in 30 into all your x's. Okay, not too hard. Okay, so calculate it, and that's my maximum area. Okay, so not, not too difficult. Now, if we take a look at question two, okay, we're going to have to work with some sort of, not really area, but we have a, you know, a cubic container now. Okay, and a cubic container with a base length twice its width is to be made with 48 meters squared of metal, including the lid. Okay, so all this to say is we have a base of x, okay, the length is 2x, okay, so twice of it. Okay, we have some sort, of, some sort of height h there. Okay, now this 48 meters squared is saying, okay, this whole thing, including the lid, is made of 48 meters squared of metal. 
Okay, so in other words, the surface area of this shape uh, is 48 meters squared. Now in part A, it tells me, okay, find h in terms of x. Okay, so all my dimensions are in x's, except for this h. So let's try and change that into a, some sort of x. So how are we going to do that? Well, what did we say before? We said the surface area of this prism, or this container, is 48 meters squared. So let's try and work with that. So to find the surface area of this container, okay, we're going to consider all of the faces. So these two faces, okay, so we have x times h, and we have two of those faces. Now these two, okay, that's x times 2x, and we have two of those. And finally, these last two pairs, okay, that's h times 2x, and we have another two of those. Okay, so that's my surface area, and that will give me 48 meters squared. Okay, so from here, let's try and use some algebra to clean this all up. Okay, now we can collect like terms. We have 2hx and 4hx here. Okay, so this is what we get. Uh, let's try and simplify as much as we can. I'm going to divide everything by 2. Okay, let's go back to the question. Well, we want to find h in terms of x. So from this little equation, let's try and isolate everything away from h. So we want h equals everything else. Okay, now moving the 2x, to the 2x squared to the other side is a good start. And to isolate h by itself, let's divide everything by 3x. Okay, and finally we found h in terms of x. Okay, so I'm going to leave it up there. Okay, so we can use that for later. Now, next part, it says, okay, let's try and find the volume of this container in terms of x. Okay, so volume of this container, okay, well, that's all the dimensions multiplied together. So, h times x times 2x, and that's my volume. Okay, now in terms of x, all we need to do is replace this h with all the x's that we found before. Okay, so let's replace it. Okay, now let's try and simplify. So this is my volume. Now to simplify, uh, well, first of all, we can cancel this x and this x, and then multiply everything by uh, this 2x. Okay, so if we simplify this, this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so that's my volume in, uh, in terms of x. Okay, so I'm going to write that up here again, because we're going to have to use that later. Okay, so find the x value for the maximum volume. Okay, so we can see, okay, volume equals this long equation. Now, depending on my x value, the volume will change. Okay, so we want to find what x value will give me the maximum volume. Okay, to do that, again, we're going to try and have to differentiate and find a, some sort of stationary point for x. So, if we differentiate, we're going to differentiate this volume. So uh, differentiate this volume in terms of x. So we get dv over dx. Okay, so when we differentiate, uh, now look, we have a big fraction here. Okay, now the denominator of 3 is just a constant. So all you need to do is differentiate the, the top part. Okay, they're only the x's. So if we differentiate that, uh, this is what we will get. Okay, and to find the stationary point, that derivative or the first differentiated must be equal to 0. Okay, so again, let's try and solve this little equation and find the value of x. Firstly, let's just multiply everything by 3 so we can get rid of that fraction. Okay, and from here, let's just solve it. Okay, so we want to find the value of x. Okay, x squared is equal to 4, then x is equal to plus minus 2. Okay, now since we're talking about uh, lengths, we can't really have a negative length, can we? So we're just going to take, okay, x is equal to 2, since, you know, since the length cannot be a negative number. Okay, so we found a stationary point, uh, x is equal to 2. Okay, now what we need to do now is find the second derivative, okay, to make sure that this is a maximum instead of a minimum. Okay, so there's a stationary point, it can give me a maximum value or a minimum value, but we can only know if we find the second derivative. Okay, so this is the volume, okay, and we differentiated it once, and we're going to differentiate it one more time. Okay, so we're going to differentiate this one right here. Okay, so if we differentiate it, we get negative 24x over 3. Okay, and if we simplify that, we get negative 8x. Okay, so this is my second derivative. Okay, and my stationary point is at x is equal to uh, x is equal to 2. So if I put 2 in there, I get, okay, my second derivative is negative 16. Okay, so it's a negative number. So we have a negative, uh, negative second derivative, which means that that stationary point at x equal to 2 will give me a maximum volume. Okay, so hopefully we followed on. Okay, so let's leave it up there. 
So the maximum volume uh, is given by, oh sorry, it's a maximum volume when x is equal to 2. So let's find that maximum volume. Okay, so this is my volume equation, and all I need to do is sub in x equal to 2 into all of those x's. Okay, so not too difficult. So put all your 2's into the x's, and then calculate this long equation, or this long expression, and this will be it. 21 and a third meters cubed. Okay, and that's the maximum volume.